Thanks for walking through this migraine day with me. I hope tomorrow I'll be back up on my feet. But laying down has its benefits too. My 60 to 40 ratio plan here of my typical month, typical year, has been 60% migraines in some form or shape. And the 40% will leave me with um, the chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. I'm sure there's a good day in there, but I don't know where to steal the percent from. I'd say 2% somewhere in between all of that is a perfectly complete, no pain, no memory confusion, no auras, no nothing, just crisp, clear, 100% on focus for a full 24 hour day there are moments in the day where that clarity comes I'd say sometimes I'll get a good 12 hours out of a day but yeah and it makes it hard to maintain life friendships connectivity with others that's why I love my orchids so much. I normally have my coffee in the morning and then go up and water my orchids and then do my showering and getting ready. Cause the morning it's, you know, I'm not a rise and shine anymore, anymore these days. I'm not a rise and shine, you know, 6 a.m. ready to go kind of person. I used to be when I had children, I would be the one that was up and going and making lunches and coffee and my kids would say can you just turn it down a little bit in the morning mom you're just like too much in the carpool ride you know just too much and I'm like okay yeah, take it down a notch but that's it seems like a lifetime ago that that was me a part of me so I'm a little bit slow, slower in the morning now uh, but when I get into my orchid room and I water, that really is refreshing for me. It's my distraction. It truly is. And I enjoy doing that. And right now, my my worry is my poor orchids need a drink this morning. <laughs> and I can't give it to them. Because bending over the bathtub, filling up the bucket, measuring the fertilizer and all of that and then carrying the bucket into the orchid room and manually lifting each mount and watering them it's just something I don't have the coordination and the strength to do this morning so I'm hoping by later today the medicine that I took will have revived me enough to give them a drink but they did get a good watering yesterday But while I'm laying here, I like to watch my friends. I call them my friends because I think that when you meet someone in life or you share an experience that someone else allowed you to share with them, you become friends. And I think like today I'm in bed sitting here and I'm thinking of, of Fernanda Nascimento. For some reason, I'm thinking of you, girl, and your beautiful voice and your calm personality as you love on your orchids and, and speak to us on the other side of the camera. I count you as my friend because you've shared your hobby, you've shared your view into your world, you've shared your heart you've commented back and forth in comments and so i count you as my friends although we have never met in person and there are so many of you out there 
that I've grown to enjoy and appreciate and feel as if I have a connection in the orchid world. So if I start naming you all off, I'm sure I will forget somebody and I don't want to offend anyone. So I will just leave it at that, that I thank you for your friendship and I thank you that um, you've helped me grow my orchids. I thank you. Thank you very much for that. As I roll into turning off this video, I am going to be starting a new book and the, the author that I have been diving into and just really, really enjoying um, all from last year and this year, I, I found him last year. Uh, he wasn't lost, but I found him. <laughs> I have enjoyed his books. Um, I listen to them from the library or on the Kindle because I can't, some of my migraines, uh, my vision is so wonky, I can't read. Uh, so I always just choose to start the book in audio form because I know um, that I can listen all night long and not bother my brain. I wanted to show you, this is um, my barometer app. <laughs> Whenever the barometer goes below 30, for me, I know a migraine is coming. My light is flickering again. Hold up. Gotta give it a what's up for. We'll see if that works. Malcolm Gladwell. I have read about four of his books. The first one was called David and David and Goliath, I think, that I read. The next one that I read was called Talking to Strangers. Very, very good. That was intriguing. It even hooked my husband in. He's like, mm, I'm going to have to read that one. And then I read Blink. And that had a lot of crossover information that was shared in Talking to Strangers or Blink. I don't remember which one came first. And then the new one that I'm going to start reading when I shut down the video is called What the Dog Saw. So I'm interested in reading that one. I encourage you to check out that author. I love it when an author actually reads his book or her book and that uh, the ones that are on audio for Malcolm, he reads them, they're really good. Another book that I just finished and really enjoyed because she spoke my life. <laughs> it's, it's probably more applicable to women, but there are men in chronic illness bodies that have gone from one diagnosis to the next, to the next, to the next, like a snowball effect. And that's kind of what she writes in this story. It's called The Lady's Handbook for Her Mysterious Illnesses by Sarah Ramey. And it's read by the author at the beginning and the end, and then a secondary author reads the bulk of the book. And it's very um, powerful and it talks about all the things she's tried and how the modern day health care system has failed many of us women uh, for centuries centuries uh, mostly because of the way they think of the human body and the female being uh, inferior to the male and how it's been dominated in the medical fields. You, all the studies, all of the uh, trials are all done on the average white male over the years. So she talks a lot, a lot about all the things she's had to endure. Some of them I wouldn't tolerate, but we all have medical doctors that we can go in our memory. Uh huh. I will never go back to that doctor ever again or that that one you know doctor you know 
oh, if I could give them my two cents, I would. <laughs> and I've been known to share my two cents, just, just saying. Um, but those were some great authors. If you're looking for something to read or to listen to while you're in bed, or while you're in your car, or while you're cooking dinner, or while you're doing life, however life looks like for you, I really appreciated those those books. Malcolm Gladwell and Sarah Ramey. And I think I will go start that what new book about what the dog spot. saw. Thanks for spending some time with me in my bed as I walk through this hemiplegic migraine today. Peace and love, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.